It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. Palestinian protests continue over President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israeli forces have cracked down across the occupied territories, killing at least four people and wounding hundreds more. Joining me from Ramallah is Mariam Barghouti, Palestinian-American writer who covers Palestine and the Israeli occupation. Welcome, Mariam. Uh, what have you been witnessing over the past few days? Um, over the past few days, Palestinians have been protesting in the streets against the latest Trump recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. You have seen youth um, and, and uh, various segments of Palestinian society go to the streets, uh, perform acts of civil disobedience, such as mass strike across the West Bank and within Jerusalem and, and 48 Palestine, historic Palestine. And what has been the Israeli uh, response? There have been some images coming out of Israeli forces cracking down on Palestinian children, firing tear gas. Uh, what kind of tactics have the Israeli forces been using? Well, the tactics that the Israeli forces have been using is nothing unusual for Palestinians. They've been coming at us with the usual excessive tear gas uh, usage against protesters, shooting plastic-coated uh, steel bullets, shooting uh, live ammunition, injuring over 2,000 Palestinians throughout um, the West Bank, Gaza, and, and historic Palestine as well. So the, the, the tactics that are use, they're, they're using are not uh, new. In fact, they've been using them against Palestinians for decades. And how do uh, the protests get organized among Palestinians? Are there meetings? Are they even, is it even possible to organize under the conditions of occupation? It's not exactly impossible to organize. There are specific central points where protests occasionally happen in, in Palestine. You have the checkpoints that Palestinians have been protesting for years. You have a Damascus Gate in Jerusalem that has been a centralized location for mobilization. In Gaza, you have um, near the buffer zone where protesters go and, and mobilize there as well. So it's not exactly one strategy, rather this knowledge amongst Palestinians of where the confrontation points occur. One of the uh, most viral photographs uh, so far from the protest has been that of Fazi al-Junaidi, uh, 16 years old, uh, blindfolded by the Israeli forces and taken away. He's now facing charges. Can you talk about his case? Well, of course he's going to be facing charges by, by the Israeli military court, who accustomedly takes Palestinian youth and throws uh, charges at them whether it's stone throwing or illegal protesting, you have a 99.7 conviction rate against Palestinians. You've had the IDF apologize for their soldiers stealing fruit um, during a protest, but at the same time not saying anything when they are violently suppressing Palestinians and arresting young people like like Genevi. Right, can you talk about that? The IDF put out a press statement saying that it had disciplined a soldier for stealing fruit from a uh, fruit stand in the West Bank. How was that received in the occupied territories? Of course, it was mocked because what it essentially shows, however, is how much Israel dehumanizes Palestinians and how little value they give for Palestinian lives, that they felt the need to send out a release on apologizing for the behavior of a soldier that stole fruit but at the same time, you have Israeli settlers stealing Palestinian homes, kicking Palestinians out of their houses, their lands, and, and uh, soldiers violently suppressing, beating Palestinians, arresting Palestinians, uh, charging them in a military court. But they felt that it was more important to, to speak out about stealing essentially fruit. Uh, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, he has uh, criticized the U.S., saying that, it, it no, that Palestinians will, will no longer consider the U.S. a partner in the so-called peace process. Do you take that seriously? The U.S. has never really been a partner in the U.S. process, in the peace process. It's been constantly aligned with Israeli interests. It's the Palestinian Authority's failure to recognize that nothing is going to come out of these negotiations because the demands of Palestinians are not taken seriously. Nothing is being implemented on the ground. It's all been fruitless talks at the expense of the Palestinian population. Do you think then that the 
Palestine's struggle for freedom can move forward with people like Abbas and his circle in power? Absolutely not. I mean, they had their chance for more than 25 years. What they were what they brought the Palestinian people is the Oslo Accords that have further compromised our, our rights and our dignity and turned the Palestinian Authority into a subcontractor of the occupation, making it the cheapest occupation. And, and as a result, they, they have no space in, in the Palestinian struggle because the Palestinian Authority's interests do not align with that of the Palestinians. And finally, the fact that the Palestinians are not just under a military occupation, not just in the West Bank carved up by settlement blocks, but also territorially, the West Bank and Gaza are totally cut off from each other. How hard is it for a Palestinian movement to develop under these conditions? Well, it's not just the West Bank and Gaza. You have Palestinians completely divided between Palestinians with Jerusalem ID, Palestinians with Israeli citizenship. You have almost 50% of the Palestinian population in the diaspora. So it's not just being cut off from Gaza. This is the divide and conquer strategy. And it's a colonial strategy that has been used in the past and is being used against Palestinians. It makes it difficult because what it essentially does is also divide Palestinian identity. It makes Palestinians think that one suffering is different than the other when it's all under this umbrella of occupation and colonialism. Um, so it makes it difficult to further connect, to relate, uh, to, to network with one another. But yet, uh, do you see the fact that protests like these um, are continuing and they're the latest in a long history of organized resistance to the occupation, do you see encouraging signs? Well, here's the thing is many, many people in the media are portraying this as something new. Palestinians have been protesting for decades and they will continue to protest as long as uh, they're, they're, they're not liberated, they will continue to speak out against it. The question is, when will the rest of the world finally begin listening to these voices on the ground? Marion Barghouti, Palestinian-American writer, speaking to us from Ramallah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.